What's up folks? This is customizing the quality of life dashboard version four. For every version of the dashboard, I've done a, a YouTube video on customizing that version of the dashboard for your local community. And they've tended to be rather lengthy videos. Um, they've gotten easier over time, I hope, but this one's going to be really, really easy. I've created an additional data repository for the quality of life dashboard that will automatically populate some data for you if you're in the US. Apologies if you're not in the US. You can give it a FIPS code for a state or a county and it will get the GeoJSON set and 22 variables for two different years from the American Community Survey data and populate all that for you. And so you can just run a few commands and you can have a dashboard for your community up and running very, very quickly. So let's see how that works. First, we need to grab our dashboard. So let's git clone that. And we'll get that working on installing all of its dependencies. The new repo is Quality of Life Data US Census. And in the build folder of it, I think it's a little bigger for you, there's this config file. And here is where you would give it a FIPS code. A FIPS code is a code representing a particular uh, census geography, ge a census geographic entity. So you can have a FIPS code, they, they just grow. The first two digits are the state. The next three digits are the county. So that would be that county and that particular state. And then it goes to census track and block group and it, it, it just, it grows. So if you give it a two digit code like three seven, it would get, your geographic unit would be counties and it'd be every county in North Carolina is your data set. If you give it a five digit code, it will be just that particular county and it would get block groups as your unit for your data set. So this is Gaston County in North Carolina. Let's get this data repo. So now we've got that. Go into that folder and we need to NPM install there as well. In the regular Mecklenburg uh, data repository, you only have to run the installation if you want to run data unit tests. That's right, I wrote unit tests. So, yeah. testing people suck it. I didn't enjoy it very much, but yeah, I, I did it because people tend to have, tend to face plant on the data in that repository quite often. And, and I can't really blame them for it. So now we've got that all the, the uh, packages we need for that, we'll just go pm run build. And for Gaston County, that FIPS code, it's gonna go get the geography and the data and write out some metadata files as well. Very basic meta. So let's go back and we'll open Visual Studio Code here. All right. Just open a terminal over here. We don't need you anymore. Bigger, bigger. No, oh, it's smaller. Bigger, bigger. Oh, it's really big. Okay, so let's just start this firing up uh, because that'll, for its first go, its first run, it'll, it'll take you a little while. Now, if you look in our data folder, when we ran that command, it made this GeoJSON folder and put our GeoJSON there, and it put in. Our, met, our metadata and our metrics. Now, if you look in the build folder at that config again, these are columns from the American Community Survey, and that's where it's pulling the data from. And it's just a random grab of like 22 variables. If you want to add more variables, add them to the end because the order of these variables corresponds to the. Uh, it corresponds to the data configuration 
here. So this metric one will be the first one in that uh, in that list. So if you, if you throw something in the middle, take something out in the middle, you're going to have to go back in and reset those those IDs in that data configuration. Pro tip: add things to the end. So now we've got. Uh, Gaston County over here instead of Mecklenburg all ready to go. I tell you what, while we're here, let's go into the site and we'll change the title to Gaston uh, Data Gazetteer, probably misspelled. So here's our data. We can select stuff. We can uh, pan and zoom in 3D stuff. We can rearrange, see the data table and the data values and highlight them on the map. We've got our trend chart. We've got all of our stuff up and running. We can do our embed and iframe and download it as different things. Here's the very, very minimal uh, meta I was telling you about. So we are all set to go with our own quality of life dashboard for Gaston County. Here's a list of metrics and you can filter by particular types and add and remove stuff as you see fit. It's uh, yeah, up and running. So that's, that's how easy it is to get up and running with the basic community dashboard uh, for your local community. Uh, I actually, this took me a little while to do, and the reason is, is I did it twice, more or less. I've been looking for an excuse to try R, and this seemed like a really good one. R is made for this sort of stuff, and R is awesome. It's like nothing else I've ever used before. It's, uh, I mean, R and Python are kind of, and maybe Julia, are the languages of, of data science. But Python, at least, is more a general purpose scripting language. Uh, R is made just for this kind of stuff. It is really neat. My problem with R was that the package management for it is not very good. I, I really only need two R packages. Those might have went to fetch other R packages too, but yeah, I really only needed two. Uh, I needed tidy census and GeoJSON.io. So I installed R and it was working. So I went to install a package, tidy census, and it says you need TK to install packages. And that is a that's not an R thing. That's like a Linux uh, uh, a Linux package. It's outside of R. So I installed that, and then I said, well, now you need the GCC Fortran compiler extension to install. Tiny census, which is another thing that's that's a, a system dependency and not an R thing. So I install that, and then it says you need the the U Dunnets library or the UD units, which I had to find in like the Arch user repository, and it just went on and on like that. And all of that's fine for me. I can do that stuff. I even ended up building a a Docker image just with that R stuff installed so I wouldn't have to clutter up my whole system with all this all this thing. But I can't really distribute code like that. I can't uh, distribute that R file and go, hey, uh, good luck. <laughs> that's, that, that, that's not a very friendly thing to do. So instead I did it in Node. I started again in Node and I ended up, I found the city SDK from the census by a uh, uh, Logan Powell, who's awesome. He, he, he uh, addressed an issue I had like, I like submitted uh, an issue and he's like almost instantly, give me 19 minutes and it, it was fixed. So he's awesome. Uh, but City SDK, for what I was doing, it's really just formatting a census API call. And, and I, can, I can build an API. So it's not, it's just plain, uh, it's just plain node JavaScript. And it's fetching the data from the census and plopping it right in. And that is 
how you can get started with the dashboard now. Very quick and easy, run some commands and you'll be primed with 20 some odd metrics from the census to start your dashboard with. I hope that helps. The Mecklenburg Data Repository, of course, is still out there and you can use that. The, the other nice thing about this repository is the Mecklenburg one, if there's a complicated way to do things, that's how we do them in Mecklenburg. And the configuration files there were, were just enormous. Because we have a lot of data, but also every metric is a snowflake. And uh, in the metric configuration, like uh, probably more than half of the configuration options are optional. And we use all that stuff. That's the reason it's there. But you probably won't want to because you're probably normal people. So the configuration of the new repository is a lot easier to find your way around in and, and navigate through. I hope that helps. Enjoy. Uh, if you put your own dashboard out there, uh, yeah, let me know where it is just because just I think that stuff's really cool. And uh, if you need help, uh, submit an issue or, or contact me or, or do whatever. I'll be glad to help you out. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.